The reason I'd like to be the Royal Society of Chemistry's president is chemistry changed my life. It took me from a council estate in North London and it opened up a world of opportunities and experiences that I couldn't possibly have imagined. And I'm extremely grateful to chemistry, but also I'm grateful to the Royal Society of Chemistry because along the way it's been there. So whether it was that very first school's outreach thing that, that I went to where I learned all the different things you could do with a chemistry degree, or whether it was the Molten Salts discussion group where I gave my first ever public presentation. The RSC has been with me along the way. And so it really matters to me. And it matters to me that those opportunities can be given to anybody, no matter where they come from, no matter who they are or what their background is. And the RSC is really the organisation that most delivers that. The main challenges that the RSC faces seem to me that there are three of them. The Breaking the Barriers report has told us that we really do need to make changes to the way that we as professional chemists behave. And as the profession, 55,000 members across the world, we are the organisation that has to lead that change. And that's something that will go on for years, but we have to absolutely take that report and start it now. Then there's a second thing, and it's that thing about being across the world, it, I think it really matters that when we think about the services that the RSC provides, that those, prov those services are just as accessible to somebody who lives in Mumbai as lives in Manchester. It should be just as straightforward to get your CCHEM accreditation if you are outside the UK. We should be providing those services internationally. And I think in this world that we're in at the moment, it really matters that we grow our influence internationally. And in some countries that will be partnering with an already existing strong chemical society of their own. In others, that won't be available. And it will be our role to help support the growth of the chemical community in those countries. And even to the extent that what, you know, supposing one day it came about that, you know, the RSC local section in, I won't say a name, but country without a chemical society now, decides that it's got to the stage where it could become one. I wouldn't see that as a failure, I'd see that as a success. And so that internationalisation really, really matters to me. And it starts with, you know, the quality of chemistry degrees around the world, the accreditation that we do, having much more of that being international and as I say partnering with other organisations and also growing our membership internationally. I think that's a really important thing. And then finally there's something which is uh, on the horizon for us, well maybe we're even going through it, which is the change in the way that science is published. And we are supported in our charitable acts by our commercial division in journals publishing. And that world is changing and changing very rapidly. And it's vital that we ensure that we have a sustainable business model through the transition from the kind of publishing we do today to whatever it's going to be in 5, 10, 20 years time. And we absolutely need to ensure that we do that because if we don't, we won't be providing those funds into our charitable services. I think one does have to be careful when making predictions. The thing you're most likely to see in a crystal ball is your own reflection. But having said that, I think that, you know, the future for chemistry and the chemical sciences more broadly is bright. There are incredible advances being made in the applications of chemistry constantly and we see that there are all sorts of problems that are being addressed now that have chemical solutions whether it's you know pollution in cities like this one whether it's climate change whether it's antibiotic resistance just wherever you look there are chemical solutions to the problems that we're facing but then that's supported by 
an incredible growth in the foundations of the subject. And the thing that amaze, amazes me was, you know, when I was at school, there was metallic bonding, there was ionic bonding, there was covalent bonding, and there was this funny thing called hydrogen bonding that, well, maybe it isn't even really a bond and it's just something else and that argument was going on. Whereas now it seems there's a new type of bonding <laughs> almost every month. Um, who knew that there was going to be such a thing as halogen bonding? And there's more and more understanding of how molecules bond, which if, if there's anything which is chemistry, to me that's what chemistry is. And so our absolute fundamental levels are changing. And then alongside this I see another change. When I look at my students and compare them to my generation, um, at my generation, your aim was to, you know, get, get yourself a good degree, go and work probably for a largest company and have a job that would sustain you through your entire career. Now, I might even say the majority, but certainly a very large minority of my students, they come in and what they want to be as an entrepreneur, they want to start their own business, they want to directly attack some of the societal problems themselves in their own business and, it, and that's a complete change and I have no idea how that generation are going to be as they work their way through their careers but they are going to be very different to mine.